Kinetic molecular theory is really just common sense. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Wait a minute. The way it was explained to me is definitely not common sense. Well, stick with me for the next few minutes, and I'll not only show you how kinetic molecular theory is common sense, but also how you can use kinetic molecular theory to help explain the behavior of gas molecules. Okay, so the kinetic molecular theory is made up of five components. You can think of these as rules in a way that help us better understand and explain how and why gas molecules behave the way they do. Here are the five rules or components to the kinetic molecular theory. Number one is that gases consist of a large number of molecules that are always moving around randomly. Simply put, this just means that gas molecules are always moving and we cannot predict the path that they will take. Number two is the combined volume of all the molecules of a gas is negligible relative to the total volume in which the gas is contained. Simply put, this just means that gases are going to fill whatever size or shape container we put them in. Number three is that the attractive and repulsive forces between gas molecules is negligible. This just means that gas molecules are not attracted to each other or to the surface of the container that they are in. This is going to be very different from solids and liquids, as we know solids and liquids both have attractive and repulsive forces at play. Number four is the average kinetic energy of gas molecules does not change with time as long as the temperature remains constant. When we think of gas molecules moving around randomly, we know that collisions are going to happen. However, those collisions are always elastic, which means no energy is lost in the collision. This means that as long as you keep the temperature constant, it is safe to assume that the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules is also remaining constant. And number five says the average kinetic energy of gas molecules is proportional to the temperature. So like we just discussed in number four, the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules is not going to change with time as long as the temperature remains constant. However, if we do change the temperature, that means we are going to change the kinetic energy of our gas molecules. If the temperature of our gas molecules goes up, so will the kinetic energy. The opposite is also true that if we lower the temperature of our gas molecules, the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules will also go lower. So now that we understand the five parts of the kinetic molecular theory, let's look at how we can use these to help us explain the behavior of gas molecules. So in our first scenario, we'll answer the question, why does the pressure of a gas increase when the temperature increases? It is important to remember step five of kinetic molecular theory tells us that the average kinetic energy of the gas molecules is proportional to the temperature. This means that as we increase the temperature of our gas molecules, the kinetic energy is also going to increase. And we know that kinetic energy is the energy of motion, so this increase in kinetic energy is going to cause the gas molecules to move faster. And as the gas molecules move faster, this is going to result in more collisions between the inside surface of the container and the gas molecules. And because we have the gas molecules colliding with the inside surface of the container more often, this is going to result in an increase in pressure. We also have an increase in pressure due to the force of the collisions. The gas molecules are moving faster, as we said earlier, and because of this, we know that each collision that occurs is also going to be occurring with more force, and this also increases the pressure. In another scenario, we can use kinetic molecular theory to help us explain why does the volume of a gas go up when the pressure is increased. So based on kinetic molecular theory, you should remember that one, gases consist of a large number of molecules that are always moving around randomly, and two, we know that gases are going to fill whatever size or shape container that they are put in. So if we had a balloon that had a gas inside of it, and we were to increase the pressure of the gas inside the balloon, let's look at why is this balloon going to expand? Well, the reason is due to an imbalance in pressure. If I increase the pressure on the inside of the balloon, that means the pressure on the inside of the container or the balloon is higher than the pressure of the gas on the outside of the container. This imbalance causes the gas molecules on the inside to spread out more. And because the balloon is not a rigid container, the balloon is able to expand. The balloon will expand until the pressure of the gases inside is equal again to the pressure on the gases outside. If I relate this back to kinetic molecular theory, I know that the gas molecules are all moving around randomly, and I know that they are also going to fill the container. When the pressure of the gas molecules on the inside of the balloon is increased, 
That means they are pressing on the inside surface of the container with more force. Because they are pushing with more force than the gas molecules outside, the balloon is able to expand, or we can think of it that the volume of the balloon was able to go up. So there you have it. That is kinetic molecular theory. I hope that by now you can see that while it might not be 100% common sense, a lot of the rules of kinetic molecular theory do make sense once you think about what you already know about how gases behave in the world around you. Thanks again for watching, and if you found this video helpful, here are a few other videos that might help you out.